Hello and welcome to the What Women Want Today podcast. You might be asking yourself right about now, well, what do women want? I mean, we're pretty complex creatures, right? Well, I think we want it all. And I'm here to explore it with you. My name is Terry Kellams. I'm your host. Go grab your favorite beverage. I've already got my glass of wine and let's get started. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the podcast. If you have been following me um, on the podcast or through my social media accounts over the past couple of years, you've heard my story of our moves and our living situation and our never ending build of our flip house. I recently posted a tour of the flip house on social media and we are literally days away from closing. Today, I can say I'm so happy to be sitting here in front of the mic recording this podcast because I am a woman of routine. <laughs> and the past, well, you know what? Me and my husband had a conversation about this. I say it's really the last month has just been really grueling. Now, he says the last six months have been tough. And when we really stopped and thought about it, it's probably been the pressure of the last three months that have been the worst because we actually signed a contract with the buyers three months ago and have had so many delays and it's just been something that we weren't prepared for. So it's, it's been tough. So I'm glad it's coming to an end. But on the podcast, we've been talking about the happiness puzzle for the better part of the last two months. And today I am excited to share my interview with author and Enneagram coach Jackie Brewster. I've been learning about the Enneagram for some time now, and I've kind of had it in the back of my mind that I wanted to find a way to share it with you. When I started following Jackie on Instagram and learned that she was an author and a coach, well, I crossed my fingers and invited her to join me today. It is a pretty cool experience when you follow someone and admire their work and get the opportunity to sit down and have conversation with them. But before we do that, I want to share with you what I believe you will find in today's conversation and how it relates to the happiness puzzle. We started out talking about personal growth. And I love the Enneagram tool for helping you understand more about yourself. We've talked about the importance of the quality of your relationships. And Jackie shares today how her upcoming book is a great resource for that. We've also talked about self-acceptance as one of the elements. And today you'll hear both Jackie and I say, you are not your number. You are so much more than that. And I know personally, I have taken the knowledge I've learned about myself through the Enneagram to accept parts of me that I don't always like and to take action to change them. You don't need to have knowledge of the Enneagram to find value in the conversation today. But after listening in, I hope it'll prompt you to go deeper with your own personal growth journey and maybe think of someone else this episode can benefit and share it with them. I hope you'll decide to uh, follow Jackie on Instagram and learn from her. It is an exciting part of your growth journey to discover more parts of your personality. If you would like to know my recommendations for a really good test to discover your number, please reach out to me through private message on Instagram or Facebook, and I will put all the links that Jackie and I talk about um, in the show notes today. Next week, we will complete our happiness series, and I have an announcement to share with you. So let's go ahead and join my conversation with Jackie now. Jackie, welcome to the show today. I'm so glad you're here with me. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. You know, so someone that's been listening to my podcast for a while, or maybe just stumbling on it for the first time, they might be going, okay, Terry, what does the Enneagram have to do with midlife women? And, you know, this is what I think, and I would love for you to weigh in on it too, but I think going through the program that I went through to become a coach and then steering towards the midlife women, one thing that I heard John Maxwell say over and over is in order to grow, we first have to know ourselves. And so I have been really focused on that for several years now. And I feel like, you know, and I've talked to my girlfriends about this, like who you were at 20 is not who you are at 30 not who you are at 40. And then life takes this big change. If you've had children and your children are grown, maybe even up out of the house. And now you're just you and your husband together, just like looking at each other, like, um, do we remember each other? And you're just sort of doing a lot of self exploring, like, who am I? What do I want this time part of my life to look like? Um, What new passions can I explore? What's my purpose now for this part of life? So I really think 
the Enneagram has been like a huge part of me really understanding why I do some of the things I do, why I behave some of the ways I behave. And so will you weigh in on that? What do you think the Enneagram means for the midlife woman? Oh, I think that it is this eye opening moment. Um, when you read pages of a book that start to describe things about you that maybe you thought were flawed or broken or misunderstood even, um, or parts of you that you're like, oh my gosh, I remember that part of me. Like, wait, where did that part of me go? So I think that the Enneagram helps us to uncover and discover. That's yeah. the way I like to teach it and talk about it. So we have to, we uncover parts of ourselves when we go back into looking to childhood um, patterns of behavior. All of our patterns of behavior develop in childhood as early as the age of two. Mm. Well, not all of them, but right. these grounding ones, right? That, that The ones that help us figure out our Enneagram numbers. Right. They They really have roots in early childhood. So we've got to go back and uncover some things, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, maybe things we didn't want to uncover or even talk about anymore. But as uh, middle-aged women, I think it's beneficial for us to kind of go back and see some things about us, what has made us who we are. Um, and then to discover parts of ourselves again, uh, reawaken to parts of ourselves again, and to figure out where we want to go next. So the tool of the Enneagram has been incredibly helpful in my own personal experience. Uh, and then I get to see it happen all the time with my clients in mm -hmm. coaching as they uncover and discover parts of themselves, this amazing tool. Oh, yeah. I could not agree with you anymore. That, that was perfect. Um, so what... So this is book number two for you. We're talking about your new book a little bit today. This is book number two for you. What, what do you feel like was the like almost pivotal moment for you to decide I'm going to start learning about the Enneagram? Like what made you do that? So 12 years ago, I would, I want to say 10, but it's really 12 because I'm getting older every year. So I'm going to add years to this <laughs> right, story. Right. Um, <laughs> but 12 years ago, I was taking a walk with one of my girlfriends and she's got this, you know, perfect little family. I've got four children. My last two are twins and they were born early and they're just little. They were just so little. Um, and so when uh, they were young, so at this point they were two and I was taking a walk with my girlfriend and they're like, getting out of their stroller and climbing all over the place. And hers is sitting there reading a book and like eating a <laughs> snack on the walk. I look like a crazy person. <laughs> um, and I think in that season, I was a crazy person. Sure. Um, but uh, after that walk, she messaged me and just said, Hey, I just want you to know, I just sent a book to you through Amazon. You're going to get it in a couple of days. And I was like, okay. So I opened this book and I'm like, first of all, that cover is weird. Like what in the world are you getting me into? What mm -hmm. is this? And I start to read through it. And very quickly, I realized, oh, I think she's trying to fix me. Like, I think <laughs> <Yeah>. that, <laughs> like, I know I'm a broken mess, but I think she does too. Right. Um, and so that was the journey of, like, that's the beginning of the journey of Enneagram discovery that I just started to go down and read about um, the Enneagram numbers. I tested as an eight. And so I read through it and I'm like, yeah, I mean, okay. Like, yeah, probably. And then the more I read though, and just did some of the other testings, uh, the more that I leaned into the seven and those heart longing messages and the childhood wounding was a seven. It all lined up with a seven coping mm -hmm. strategies, everything about it. So I'm an Enneagram seven with a strong eight wing. Um, but it was in that early time that I started to really find, um, find parts of myself again. At this point, I'm in my mid thirties, um, been raising kids, lost to who I am at all. Um, and I start to read some words on the paper that say things like frantic escapism. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that is me. Like, <laughs> oh my goodness. It, but it, for me in that moment, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not crazy. Like this is part of, this is part of coping for me. Oh, sure. okay. That makes so much more sense. So then I just dug into it and dug into it and dug into it over the years. And finally we got to the place. My husband's like, I think you just need to go get certified and just do this, like go run with it. So I got certified as a coach, uh, five years ago, mm. maybe five and a half years ago. And, um, and just started on this journey, wrote a book, like within yeah. that, it was very fast, like got a, um, a book offer early on. 
and then another project that's like a card deck and then this book that came out. So it was like this, I don't know, like it just kind of, you talk about purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that life experiences led me to this tool that helped me begin to uncover passions in me that maybe had been laid dormant for a long time. Sure. Um, and opportunities presented themselves in front of me and I just walked through the next door. I feel like that's just what I'm doing. Like walking through the next doors that open. Yeah. So let's take just a tiny step backwards. And and for the people that are listening today that say, I don't even know what number I am. Where do I start? Mm. Where do they start? Okay. So the Enneagram system is a personality typing system. It's got nine different personality types. Um, and what's different with the Enneagram than other personality typing systems like Myers-Briggs and stuff like that, they're all good. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying anything about them, just that there's a growth track for Enneagram. So that's Mm. different. So when you read about yourself, I'm I'm not saying like, this is who you are. I'm saying this might describe you, but you're so much more than this. Right. I just want you to hear that. Like, I just grow. You're not, you're not, you're not your number. You're not your number. number. You're not, your number describes personality behaviors and coping strategies that have gotten you where you are today. And yeah. we can decide, like, do we still like them? I don't know. Not all of them. Right. Um, right? <laughs> so the yes. Enneagram one uh, would be the moral perfectionist. So they really care about doing what is right in the eyes of others. They want to be um, on the right side of things. So it uh, doesn't mean they're perfectionist in every area of their life. There might be different um, focuses of attention around perfectionism, but it has more to do with, like, I want to be seen as good and right in the eyes of others. Mm. That Enneagram two is a supportive advisor and they want to, um, help people. They don't want to help all people. They want to help the people that they care about or the people that they work with or that are closest to them. They're highly relational people. Um, and there's a lot of giving at, in, in this type of personality type. There's just generosity and kindness, um, compassion and empathy. There's a lot, it's just a lot of giving in this beautiful number. So my husband's um, a two. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, you're so lucky. <laughs> Mine is not. <laughs> the Enneagram three, the driven um, achiever, a determined achiever. He, that this type of number is about achievement and success, high drive, um, performance driven. Oftentimes, like the best, you know, fastest way from point A to point B. Um, I want people to notice me and recognize me and affirm me for what they see me doing. That is good. Mm. So that's yeah. what I'm married to right there. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my husband's wing. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 Um, okay. The Enneagram for the romantic individualist, this type of person is, um, oftentimes they're, they're talked about as being creative, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're artists, you musicians or anything like that. They just have a very creative way in which they see the world. And it is so beautiful. Mm. Um, they are authentic and driven people. Um, they want people to be held in regard. So it's like, I want everybody to be seen as um, worthy to be seen. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. They're they're just, there's just a sensitivity to a four that is beautiful. So the Enneagram five is the investigative thinker. Uh, They are most, most of the time, every now and then I come across a five that's not not as reserved, but most of the time, Enneagram fives are pretty reserved. They like uh, a lot of alone time, privacy. Um, they're usually interested in something that, you know, they, they know a lot of information about one topic and they also know a little bit about a lot of other things. So, this is my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I have a son like this. Yes. The woman that gave me the book, this was her number. She's like, I know enough to be dangerous. You need yes. to read this book. Yes. <laughs> um, so, but the Enneagram five, I think they're, they're pioneers. They just, they, again, a lot like the four, they have such a creative way of seeing the world. Um, and they are not afraid to take risks or try something new or be different. They're, mm. they're, they don't conform. But Very that's true. what I've noticed. They just Very don't true. conform. We yep. would like them to, a little bit, maybe sometimes. Well, just too. sometimes, yeah. Just sometimes, <laughs> I'm like... Um, The Enneagram six is the loyal guardian and they are uh, typically 
drawn to an organization or institution or a group of people that they feel like they can find some footing with, um, that they can they can lean on for support. Uh, they want to be with a group of people that they believe in, they respect, their uh, loyalty goes both ways. They are cautious a lot of the times. Um, I was just on a call today though with a, a six and she's like, I don't, I don't feel like I struggle with anxiety because we'll hear that a lot with the sixes that there's a lot of anxiety. Um, and I like, I like cautious. I like that word because sometimes anxiety doesn't fit the six as well, but there is some caution to the six around like, I don't know if that's the best decision. Did we vet that decision? What's going on? So they so, can be more skeptical, right? Yeah. 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 They can be mm -hmm, just a little like side eye and you like, I don't know. Mm, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. The Enneagram seven um, is the, the energetic enthusiast. So they are positive, upbeat. Um, we're going to conquer the world. Who wants to do it with me? And so they really drive towards um, something fun, exciting, taking on new projects. You know, they when they're not healthy, they have a hard time finishing what they start. <laughs> That's a problem. Um, but when they are healthy, they actually can accomplish great things and uh, and really bring people along. They're very collaborative in the way that they do that. Mm -hmm. um, the Enneagram 8 is the protective challenger. Um, sometimes I feel like Enneagram eight women get a bad rap because they're and more so, aggressive sometimes. That's what people say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, um, you know, the protective challenger, there is a lot of strength and power within the Enneagram eight, and it does have a lot to do with protection of themselves, the people that they care about. Um, they really do want to make sure that they're in control of anything that has the potential to control them. Hmm. I haven't eaten so in my life, so people, that's very eye-opening. <laughs> like, I don't want to control other people. I just want to control anything that has the potential to control me. And I was like, hmm. so people get in the way of that, <laughs> Yeah, you know? Um, and then the Enneagram nine is the peaceful uh, mediator. So they are um, kind and gentle and caring, and um, they might be quiet, a little bit more reserved. Not always, um, but they do. They do want to minimize chaos and in and tension in the environment. They do care very deeply about everybody uh, having a voice at the table, and they would really love for their voice to be heard too. Yet, oftentimes they have a hard time figuring out how to use their voice. Um, and so it's one of yeah. So that's that is all of the numbers in a very quick nutshell. <laughs> Thank you for that. I am a yes. nine. And, oh, yeah. you know, what you just said resonated so much for me because I went through, I was taking a class this morning and I, we went through a little exercise and, you know, you, you narrow it down to this and you narrow it down to that. And, and one of the things that came out of the exercise was why I do the podcast. And it's because I want women to have a voice. That's so beautiful. And I've got goosebumps mm -hmm. right now, Yeah, but you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, it's a little emotional for me because my mom was so quiet. I sometimes I wonder what number she was. She's gone now, but she was so quiet and didn't speak up for herself and um, suffered through a lot of the midlife years um, in silence and lonely. And I think to myself a lot, like what woman needs to be heard out there? I'm going to bring her in here mm -hmm. and she's going to be heard. And I'm going to share her message loud and proud. And some other woman that's listening is going to say, Hey, me too. You know what I mean? Yes. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's what a gift that you were giving to myself and all the women that you have on here. And it's empowering, not only to the women you have in front of microphones, it's empowering, I think, to all women to see you walk into this. Because I think as each one of us use our voice, other people say like, I can do that too. Yes. I can do that too. Yes. And so as yes. coaches, Love it. we're like, how do we yes. help you do that? Yeah. We want to see you do this too. Right. So I, right. I oh. get you. Oh, I get you. I love you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So, so now we know a little bit about all the numbers mm -hmm. and um, I'm, I'm guessing that a lot of people are going, but wait, I have a little bit of that and a little bit of that and a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, I don't want to say that the Enneagram is complicated because it's, it's, it's complex, mm -hmm. but it's so worth it. Right. You know, like it, mm -hmm. how long do you think it took you to really kind of like grasp? Cause there's, and I don't want to confuse anybody. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to go into a lot of the, right. you know, the other parts of it today. Maybe you'll have to come back. I would mm -hmm. love to have you mm -hmm. come back, yes. but, um, you know, 
what I want to say, and, and you you can add to this, is that we all have a little bit of every number in us. It's just the ones that we adopted early on mm-hmm. as like coping strategies, right? So, yes. you know, that, that whole part about, you know, like nines, I hate conflict. I hate conflict. I avoid mm-hmm. conflict at all costs. Mm-hmm. Um, midlife and menopause has given me a little bit more of a gift and my own growth. Um, mm-hmm. Like you, you talked a little bit earlier, an unhealthy number. I can't remember which one you said. Might Seven. Be. Seven. Well, an, un- <laughs> <laughs> an unhealthy number might, you know, like an unhealthy nine may just avoid it all co- uh, at all costs yeah. to the point of detriment to the person. Right. But when you start to get healthy, when you do the work and my podcast, um, uh, podcast, I think it was episode 81 or 82. No, I c- can't remember. I was talking about personal growth. And when you start to grow, you can kind of grow out of some of those behaviors, right? 100%. So, mm-hmm. so the conflict, even though I don't love it, mm-hmm. I realize that sometimes it's necessary. Mm-hmm. Yes. Excuse me. It's that's necessary good. because, yeah. and that's why I was excited to see that you're talking about marriage here because I think at some point in life, you know, I was given the message that um, marriage doesn't have conflict. A healthy marriage doesn't have conflict. You shouldn't mm-hmm. fight. There shouldn't be mm-hmm. arguments. That is so not true. Oh my but, gosh. Yeah. It but how so do we, not true. Mm-hmm. but how do we, um, you know, like come together as two numbers and mm-hmm. with all of our stuff, you know, like our story yes. and we're, we're dragging that story along with us through life. And then we, you know, we meet with another person and their number brings different things to that story too. Mm-hmm. Is there a, a combination of numbers. I'm sorry if my dogs are have decided to fight. I don't know if anybody can hear them. Um, I don't but hear them. good. Um, so, so um, lost my train of thought for one second there. So two numbers can come together, and I love that this book addresses it. But are there like numbers that are better suited, and some that aren't as well suited? Could you see more conflict in some? And let's hear about this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's one of those ones. Um, are there numbers that are better suited? All numbers can work together. It just takes a lot of work Mm -hmm. for certain types. And so I don't ever want to say that certain numbers are better suited for each other. Um, because you know, I don't, I never want to get in the middle of somebody's story like that. Instead, I want to help you see what, how you're taking in information, how you're processing it, how the person that you're in, in a relationship with is taking in information and processing it. So I think there's a lot of work to be done around um, understanding that the person that you're in a relationship with likely doesn't see life through your lens. Sure. Um, and we think that they do because we're, we're not? kind of like self-consuming humans. So <laughs> yes. we're like, doesn't everybody see life like me? Right. And then you quickly realize in marriage that no, they don't. Um, and depending on their healthy attachment or not healthy attachment in early childhood, um, it will it will come up in coping strategies, whether you know they're willing to have the fight and have the conversation or they just retreat and they get quiet on you and you feel like alone in the fight. Um, it's funny that you say, you know, growing up or not growing up in marriage that it was taught like conflict is bad. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know that I was taught that my dad left when I was little. I don't know that I was taught a lot about marriage necessarily Mm -hmm. like that. Um, But I think my husband might've been taught like that. And then finding a, you know, us in relationship together, it was like this world, uh, world when romance married after nine months of living long distance, I would Mm -hmm. never let my children do this. (laughs) So I'm like, what what were you guys thinking? Um, But I don't think anybody could tell us no. We were like, we're going to do this. We're in love. We had, we didn't even know each other. (laughs) Um, And so 10 years into the marriage, we find ourselves in therapy because Mm -hmm. it was just getting to the, to like too hard. It was just getting too hard for a lot of different reasons. Um, And the therapist said like, what is, what does it feel like in your home? And we both said, I don't know. I mean, we don't fight. We don't really, we just kind of do what we're supposed to do, but we're not really fighting. And she said, well, that is the most dangerous place you can be in a relationship. And I was like, oh. yeah. well, I figured <laughs> <laughs> like, why was I shocked? And I figured, um, but she said like, uh, when two people, uh, are unwilling to come to the table with issues, then, um, disconnection happens. So connection happens in conflict. Uh, we don't want you to fight all the time. That is not the purpose of this right. book or anything that you and I would teach ever. Right. Um, but we do want you to be able to have a voice 
-hmm. your life and in the relationship. And so that's what I think I want to help permission in this book that I write. Um, I don't want to speak for you in coaching, but that's part of like, let's figure out what you think and what you feel in, 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 um, and what are your ideas and thoughts and whatever on whatever topic you guys are talking about? And then what are they thinking? Then how do you guys do it together? And so when it comes down to numbers, um, I don't think that there is any perfect combination of number. I think any combination of number takes an incredible amount of work because there's childhood wounding and heart longing messages mm -hmm. that we're looking for somebody to fill and fix yeah. um, in, in healthy, connected romantic relationships, a lot of healing can happen within those um, relationships around these messagings that you do learn about within the Enneagram system. Sure, sure. So does somebody have to have um, an, um, what, let's say on a scale from one to five, with five, you are just on it, you know, a lot about the Enneagram, you feel really comfortable with all the aspects of it. And one is like, I'm just starting out here. Mm -hmm. Where should someone's level be in that knowledge to get something out of your book? Like where do, do, do they have to know a lot or no, you don't know. You don't have to know anything. You can pick up the book. There's a, like a narrative form, like test in the back of the book. You could just start with that. What the book is going to help you do is unpack your number as you go through. So every single week, there's seven weeks. It's a workbook style book. Oh, great. It's got, um, it's got different activities through every section for you to work on with your partner and to, um, help you take the information into transformation. So I don't believe information is transformation until it gets activated. Exactly. And so I need people to activate the work. And so everything I do kind of has an element of activation through, um, through prompting tools or, mm -hmm. you know, drawing, writing, whatever it is. And so this book is, is just like that too. So it, it will guide you if you don't know anything at all, mm -hmm. it would guide you from the very beginning to the end. Um, and it is, it's a journey. I want to mm -hmm. say it's a beautiful journey because I, I know the journey. It's a hard journey, I think, to do together with somebody. Even I was reading the book that I just did the final edit. So I was reading it to my husband out loud because it's, it's not a little book. And so mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get through this. So reading it to him and then asking him some questions. We've been married for almost 24 years. Wow. Um, and none of this information is new to him, but even right. in that he's like, Oh, I got to sit and think about that. And I, I don't, let me think about how I want to respond to that. Yeah. So I think, um, it doesn't matter where you are in the journey. You can be brand new, never even heard of the Enneagram and you just want to do a marriage, something with your spouse. Mm -hmm. Um, you just pick it up and, and you just start the journey if the other part is willing. Yeah. <laughs> That's the key. I had my yeah. husband take the test. Oh, it's been a couple of months now. And, um, if we're taking a trip, in the car. That's a long one. I might turn on a podcast that's talking about the Enneagram and he'll go, Oh, is that my number? Or, you know, he'll ask questions or, or, you know, something will come up like, um, this past weekend, or maybe it was a weekend before he, um, got a call from a dog rescue and he just like literally dropped everything and ran down. We live close to Mexico, ran down to Mexico to pick up these two injured dogs. And he comes back and he's like, you know, he's like, do I do that kind of stuff? Cause I'm a two. <laughs> like, <laughs> You do that kind of stuff because you have a big heart, but you yes. know, like, I, I, oh, so I, I love that response too. I yeah. love that response. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I think there's so much and I'm kind of picturing like, so you've been married 24 years. I've only been married mm -hmm. six. Um, okay. so I think that sometimes, um, from what I had of a, a friend who's a marriage coach. And I think from what I've picked up from her over the years is that sometimes your relationship can get a little stale, you know, it's like, you come home from work, we eat dinner, we sit on the couch, we watch TV, we go to bed, we do the same thing. So I feel like this would be a really great opportunity for couples just to dive in a little deeper, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to to take mm -hmm. your level of intimacy, you know, just to take it up a notch. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, it dives into all different aspects of your Enneagram number, you know, each person's mm -hmm. Enneagram number, um, two different activities for each week. And it does, it talks about like core fears, core longings, heart desire. Mm. Um, it talks about, um, 
some different like stances. When we talk about Enneagram stances, there's the compliance stance, there's the withdrawn stance, an assertive stance, and how those affect your relationship and the way that you communicate. It's just like it, it's uh, it's a beautiful book filled with filled with all of this information that can help activate a deeper emotional connection. And so that is what I am all about within intimate relationships: a deep emotional connection, because it is those deep emotional connections that drive us towards intimacy. And I'm not mm-hmm. just talking about sexual intimacy. Right. Like everyday intimacy. Like exactly. I like to be around you, you know, like you don't, I don't want to, you know, I don't, I don't know if you're on TikTok at all or you pay attention to it, but sometimes there's little things on TikTok where like the husband walks by and the wife makes faces or other gestures at the them. And I'm like, I don't want to be that wife. Like Mm-mm. I want him to walk yeah. into the room and I want to still uh, want to grab his attention to have a conversation. Sure. You know, I want yeah. to be the one he wants to call when something good or bad happens. Absolutely. Um, you know, and it wasn't always like that. I will tell you, 24 years of marriage has been, it's had his roller coasters of ups and downs, especially when kids are little in the thick of it. Yes. Um, yes. And so at this stage, I've got a 20 year old and an 18 year old, and then twins that are going to be 14 in a couple weeks. So I've got a couple still home. Mm hmm. Um, but you're getting close. You're getting close to that emptiness. Yeah. And trying to find that balance of like, I still want to find connection with you because Mm -hmm. this life with kids or, yeah, I just looked at 45 and I'm like 45, half my life is probably already lived. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, think about that. And then I'm like, what do I want the rest of it to look like? So at this age, that's what I'm kind of. I'm so, mm-hmm. I'm so glad you're asking yourself those questions. I, I, I hope more women, um, maybe even a little younger are starting mm-hmm. to ask themselves that questions. Cause I think, you know, I love my audience. I love the, you know, the demographic of women I'm serving, but I think there's a, a, a spot for us to hit before we start going through mm-hmm. midlife, you know, mm-hmm. where it's like, mm-hmm. Hey, get, get it together because mm-hmm. you, what's about to happen. What's about to come. You, you might not like mm-hmm. it so much if you're not prepared for it. I know. You know, Jackie, I'm so sad that our time is coming together or just coming to an end so quickly here. This time always goes so fast. I want to make sure your new book is coming out in March. Can't mm-hmm. wait for it. So excited yes. for it. And the Enneagram and your marriage is the title. Mm-hmm. Let's tell the listeners where they can find you because your Instagram is fire lady. I love your Instagram. Thank so you. let's tell people where to find you, how they can work with you. Give them all the goods. Okay. So you can find me at Instagram, Enneagram with JB. Um, you can find me on my website, Enneagram with, with JB.com that has all my resources like coaching and leadership, all that kind of stuff on it. Um, I do have a book out right now. It's hearing God speak a 52 week Enneagram devotional. Hmm. Um, I also have another project. It's not a book, but it's an Enneagram. It's like a box deck of cards. That's um, Enneagram essentials, which if you were just kind of stepping into the Enneagram, it'd be great. And if you're an enthusiast, that would also be great. Yeah. Um, and then the book, you can pre-order the book right now oh, great. Uh, on, uh-huh. I'm so excited about it um, on Amazon. Okay. So it's the Enneagram in your marriage uh, and it comes out March 21st, which feels like forever away. <laughs> It'll be here uh, before but, you know it. Yeah. But I'm super excited about all of those resources. Uh, find me on, in- like find me on Instagram and talk to me. I love it when people talk to me and I love yeah. to see the interaction between everybody on, on Instagram. It's so neat to see. Sure. It really is. I, definitely go to her Instagram. I will put everything that we just talked about as far as her resources in the show notes today. Um, Hit that um, link in her bio so that you can get those cards. So you can know all the things about Jackie Brewster, Enneagram with JB. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I appreciate your time. I hope you'll come back again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed today's conversation as much as I did. If you'd like to continue the conversation, come on over and join our private Facebook group, What Women Want Today. I'd love to hang out with you some more there. Any resources mentioned in today's episode will be in the show notes. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at What Women Want Today podcast or visit my website at whatwomenwanttoday.com. Please remember to subscribe, download, and share. Leave me a review. It helps other amazing women find the show and become a member of our community. One last thing for you today. You are not alone. You are worthy of love and a fulfilled life. Now it's time to go after it.